Hey guys, just got done watching uh, 2000's Killjoy, starring Angel Vargas, Barry Yell, Lee Marks, Dee Dee Austin, John Grimes, Corey Hampton, Rani Gullant, and Napiria Groves. So, basically, this film is classified as a terrible movie. I read up on it quite a while back and it was classified as one of the worst Full Moon Pictures movies out there. And to be honest with you, I really liked it. I thought it was pretty good. For a cheap production, and when you know a film is going to be cheap and you know it's not going to be all that and you expect to, your expectations ain't high, you can relax more. So I kind of liked it. So let's go on with the review and the story. Basically, it starts out with Monique and Jada talking. And Monique goes, oh no, look who's coming. It turns out to be Michael. And Michael's kind of like a shy guy who's been attacked all his life. And basically, he tells Jada he wants to be with her. And she swabs him off, basically, because of... Lorenzo. I always forget his name. I keep thinking his name is Jamal, but it's not. That's the other guy. So, Lorenzo. So, basically, he leaves and he uh, basically gets threatened off and he leaves and he decides he wants to summon a friend. That's right, like Killjoy. So, he's like this clown puppet, but he lifts above his head and goes, Killjoy, Killjoy, and kind of thing. But it doesn't work. Or you don't think it works. And then outside, you got baby boy calling saying, Jada wants to talk to you. So Michael goes downstairs. T-Bone and baby boy grab hold of him. And basically, Lorenzo threatens him. And somehow, Michael ends up getting shot in the stomach and he dies. A year later, it says a year later, you see Jada walking. And she's going to spend some time do some college work, I think it is, with um, Jamal. And he tells her she's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen, and he goes to kiss her. She gets up, this is where the script doesn't make sense. She gets up and goes on about as she still thinks about Lorenzo, even though they're split up, because he took her virginity. And everybody knows when a guy takes your virginity, or a woman takes your virginity, no matter how brutal or horrible they are, you always think about them and always want to be with them. And Jamal goes, you should be thinking about Michael. Poor Michael. And she's like, yeah. And then, and then they end up kissing his, and he's, and he's giving it to her in the bed. And you're like, she's, she told him she couldn't kiss him, practically, because it would be wrong to go any further. And then five minutes later, she's in the bed with him, having really hot, passionate, rumpy pumpy. And you're sitting there going, okay. So then you meet, see Lorenzo, then you see Lorenzo talking to T Bone and Baby Boy, and he gets a he gets a page message from a woman. And basically, he goes off, and you see him having sex with her and all. And worse with you, I tried figuring out what her name was, but I couldn't find it. So forgive me if I'm mixing her up and she's in the movie more. So she goes, "What do you plan? What's your plan for five years?" And the usual things women ask. And he gets angry and goes, "I'm just trying to make it day by day because me and my two friends we're gangbangers and so we're really cheap looking ones, but we'll be all right." And then all of a sudden you see an ice cream truck and T-Bone and Baby Boy go over to it and they talk to a clown. Yep, this is the introduction of Killjoy. It gives them some pot, marijuana or whatever you want to call it. And they end up in this universe. They go through like this portal thing and they fall on their knees. Remember, see this is what gets me. Every time I saw people go from one dimension to another, it kept making me think of Power Rangers. You know when they're on one knee on the floor? And they go, 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 Power Rangers, these mighty morphing Power Rangers, Tyrannosaurus. That's what it kept making me think of. So they go on to a bat and basically Killjoy kills them. And I'll be honest with you, the kills in this weren't that great. But to be honest with you, 
that didn't seem to matter to me. I don't know why, because I've watched so many kills lately. They've become a bit fussy, but it didn't matter. It was still enjoyable. And then basically Lorenzo ends up in the dream thing, like in the thing. And he shoots he shoots the killjoy with a six bullet gun about twenty, twenty five times. Bang, 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 click, bang, 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 click. You even heard the click in the gun every time. And then Kildra goes and shoots them all out of him. And it's like these red dots from an old game, which I really liked. It's a crap effect, but I liked it. I thought it was really, really good. So then the Gable Slimmer finds her dead, and then she disappears. And Monique calls with 911. So Jada and Tamal and Jamal go over there and they talk to the and she's holding hands with a homeless man in Monique this is in her home you're standing there going oh yeah because he grabs hold of her like this and then she's standing over him and she says to this man tell him what you told me right so basically this homeless guy tells them the whole story up to that point everything we've watched about over the last half an hour he talks about and like he says things like Michael was a tormented soul who didn't have any friends. And he got to talk to Jada and she rejected him. He then went home and did some black magic. But it didn't work. And you're going, what the hell? We've seen all this. And then and then he disappears like boom. Like some sort of spirit. So Jada, Monique and Jamal decide to go into Killjoy's world. Which is basically an old, which is basically a factory or an old garage, and uh, <laughs> go against him. Well, T Bone, Baby Boy, and Lorenzo are brought back, and basically they cut their head off and everything, and bad effects, but still pretty cool, you know, for a cheap film on a cheap budget, not bad in my view. Um, so then they die, and then Kildra turns into Michael. She goes, Michael, why did you do it? And he goes, I want to be with you, be my girlfriend. And that's why I started singing Avril Lavigne's, hey, 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 I want to be your girlfriend, hey, hey, you know, so forth. But in these cases, going, hey, 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 I want to be your boyfriend. So then what? And then basically, uh, so basically then Killjoy basically uh, chases them out and they think Killjoy is dead. So they walk out because she killed Michael. And Michael, you know, the Michael book was in this thing. And they think that they killed Killjoy. So they walk out. And Killjoy, T-Bone, that turn up again. And then you hear Zordon. Oh, it felt, you hear this homeless man like Zordon going, Jada, don't forget about the doll. Jada, don't forget about the doll. That's, that's what it was like. It felt like Zoldon in Power Rangers talking down to the Power Rangers. I remember he used to say things like this. Tommy, remember your inner strength. You know, stuff like that. And I used to think that was ridiculous. And that was in the 90s. And this was in 2000. You know what I'm saying? That was in 95. And uh, so they go, oh. so Kildra goes, what's that? What was that? That was Killjoy. Then you've got them going, huh? And then they go, oh, the doll. So they get into the truck, right? And Killjoy can't get in. Now, he's this evil false. He can't get in his own truck. Where's your key? Where's your key? So then he basically, then they go for the portal. And where they end up? They don't end up where they went in. They end up dropping down in Michael's place right next to the bloody doll. How stupid's that? So basically, they go, kill the doll, Jada, kill the doll. And she goes over it with a knife, and it turn, the doll turns into Michael again. And he goes, I did this all for you, Jada, because I love you. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. So being the hoe she is, <laughs> she does it. He goes... And basically, they, the world crumbles, like, and then it stops. They do an inner circle thing. Killjoy talks to Michael, I'm guessing, like, his spirit land and eats him because he fouled. And then, basically, we go to her, um, to Jaden, Jamal, basically, 
like are having a nightmare about how Kiltoy runs this thing they go to and then Jamal wakes up beside her and he wants to have sex. He goes under the cover. The next thing that happens is obvious. Kiltoy pops out, which was obvious. If you know if you watch horror movies, you know that's gonna happen. And then credits roll. Now the movie, I actually like the acting in it. I think you are, you are, not to sound racist, but it was kind of like an all uh, black movie. Uh, all like, I don't know, African American, Jamaican American, I don't know. But I'm not trying to be racist. Um, and I kind of like that because it kind of had that whole, uh, you know, gangbanger thing, and it kind of felt more realistic because it was kind of like Leprechaun in the Hood, but it was like Killjoy in the Hood. And I kind of like that, so I thought that was quite good. And the acting wasn't bad, in my view. It wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't bad. I highly enjoyed it. And the person who played Killjoy, people have said that the remarks got on their nerves, but it was boring. But I found him highly interesting. <laughs> I liked it. You know, all I kept thinking for the movie was this could have been this could have been a real winner for Full Moon Pictures. And I know there's four movies, but I mean it could have been more epic because the series because the movie is so oh the movie's all right, but the thing that makes it is the clown. Uh, Killjoy. The Killjoy could have been like it. You know, it could have been like Pennywise. It could have been the big scary clown that was in multiple movies and it could have been demented like it was in Killjoy. It is in four movies but, I mean, on a bigger scale. There's no real suspense or tension in it but, you know, if you want to watch a brain, if you watch a movie when you feel brain dead, this is the type of movie for you because you don't have to really think about it because it's all thrown in your face. So you kind of remember it all. Like how I said about the homeless guy, basically we told the story of the same movie in the movie but you've watched the last half an hour off. So I thought that was quite funny because I was like, oh, and what am I going to do? Am I going to forget? Oh, no, wait, there's the recap. In the movie, you know what I mean? So basically the 71 minutes of the movie, eight minutes of that are intro and things, so that's what? One sixty-three minutes. Then there's that thing. So the whole movie technically is about sixty minutes. It's about an hour. Hey, okay? it's not bad. But yeah, the mo the person the person who plays Killjoy, who is Angel Vargas, was awesome. I loved him. I thought it was great. Jada was all right. She was a little bit. Eh. Jamal was fantastic. I love Jamal because all I kept thinking was this guy's going to do some serious things to try and get this woman to be with him. Monique was Monique. She was just like your typical person. Like, I don't really care, but I'm here for the ride. And uh, Michael who was at the front. I actually like Michael. I actually thought he was well acted. T Bone and Baby Boy were the two, you know, they weren't fantastic actors. But I did like Lorenzo. It was played by. William L. Johnson. Yep, William L. Johnson. I enjoyed him. So I thought that I thought it was overall it was decently acted. It wasn't fantastic. They weren't professionals by any chance, any work of imagination. But they did a good job. For a full moon pictures movie, they got remember I've just finished watching the Puppet Master movies. And they got horrendous. So I guess watching Killjoy One was kinda of like a breath of fresh air because it was so much better. But I'm looking forward to going to seeing Killjoy 2 next because I've heard that's 10 times better, 20 times better, 100 times better, whatever you want to say. I've heard it's better than number 3 and then number 4. There was a number 5, which was going to be like a little series of 5 episodes. But they didn't get the funding for it. So I don't know if that's happening anymore through Kickstarter. They had a Kickstarter, I think it was in August to September. Something like that. And they think they can't get it. And uh, to be honest, it doesn't surprise me. Because Full Moon Pictures, as much as I enjoy their work, 
their stuff has deteriorated a lot over the years. Um, so, you know, that's a bit disappointing because I probably would have liked that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the next three. Number two, three, and four. And I'm really looking forward to uh, finishing this set off. So anyway, guys, final thoughts. Not a bad movie. Fantastic. I enjoyed it. I, I recommend it to anybody who likes cheap movies. I recommend it to anybody who wants to see what m filmmaking on a really low budget can w but will work can do. Because, let's see if it says the budget. Let's see if it says if there was a budget. Well, $150,000. Now, for that $150,000, I think it worked perfectly. I mean, I, I'd like to see more films like this where they're done so great, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a great movie, but it's a good movie. And I think I think there's not a lot of thinking in a lot of movies nowadays, so I think they get ruined. Now, whether Kill, the other Killjoys are, are bad, like our Pope Master 1 was fantastic, 2 and 3, and then the rest were practically bad, it's debatable. But I will say that in another review for another time when I review them. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me on this Killjoy adventure. That's right, of the first movie. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe because I do three movies a day, reviews, and I look forward to the comments below. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and have a lovely day.